Our personal story is I like to tell the story that I got a call on a Thursday. I was expecting to adopt one child or to foster one child. And I got a call on a Thursday. Could I take a little girl and her brother the next day on Friday? So Kayla and Dustin arrived and it was 24 years ago. And then they were with me in foster care because it was uncertain whether they'd go back or not for a couple of years. And then they were adopted two years later. So did that feel like a long time, that two years of waiting? It's very difficult. Um, You agree to interact with the birth family, and there are positives to that. And then there's the heartbreak of, are they going to be able to get their lives together? Because I found myself conflicted. I wanted them to because I wanted my kids to be able to be in a safe environment with their birth family. But then when they weren't able to do that, I would also say, oh, well. You know, then they stay with me. So it's you live in a weird place. I was a single parent. So as a single parent overnight, two children, you weren't pregnant with twins. (laughs) You were preparing for single births. All of a sudden, these two little ones appear on your doorstep. Kayla, do you remember arriving on that doorstep? I do remember. We were at Lutheran Community Services at the time, and there was this little playroom, and they had a little slide and one of those tiny little you know, merry-go-round type toys, and Dustin and I were playing in there. They brought in my mom. We met her, and she was so nice, and she brought us all these little toys, my favorite one being this dog with a wrinkly nose. That you still have. I still have, (laughs) yes. From there, we just went home with her, and I unpacked my bag and had my own room, which was really cool. Before Dustin and I became a part of Lutheran Community Services, we were actually in the state system. And so we had several families through the state system. We were moved back and forth from birth parent to foster family, birth parent to foster family for quite some time. And then we finally got into Lutheran Community Services. And that was the point where everything started to stabilize because we were with my mom, you know, for the two years that we continued to be in foster care. And during that two-year period, did you ever go back to your birth family? We didn't go back, but we had weekly visits. It is very much a yo-yo experience. It's hard to explain sometimes. You feel lost a lot. You're now in a new family that has new backgrounds, and you're meeting all new family members and learning to love somebody else, you know, get used to the fact that you probably won't see your birth parents very often anymore. I struggled with that for many, many years, well into my teenhood. It wasn't until my young, probably young 20s that I really started to get over the whole emotional part of being adopted and not understanding, you know, what my emotions were. And I was lucky enough to have counselors the majority of my life. So they really helped me identify the feelings that I was having, the abandonment issues that come with being adopted and being able to recognize that and be able to kind of breathe through that and know this is what I'm feeling and that's okay. I can get past this. I still have my mom and to this day, my mom still proves every day that she's here for me. So I'm really lucky. (laughs) Yeah, I did uh, feel strange calling a new person mom. And I do remember getting mad at my brother, because my brother's three years younger than me. I'd get mad at him for calling my mom, mom. I'd be like, she's not your mother. She's Mary Lou. I was partway through kindergarten. I was six and a half or so that I really started calling my mom, mom, because it felt more like she was my mom. There was a lot of other kids that had parents too, and they called them mom and dad, and I wanted to feel the same. It wasn't until I actually lived with my mom now that I had any sort of stability. She always tells this story about how when I came to live with her, I wanted to be the parent and I was in charge. And that we struggled with that for a very long time about how I didn't want to listen to her. And because I did rule the household at four years old in my mom's house, I made the rules. I went to bed when I wanted to go to bed. There was no true stability in my other homes. I'd say it's probably one of the most important things. I have no idea where I'd be without my mom and all the help she has brought to me.